Because it's been so long, we just need to quickly remind ourselves what we've learned in a quick, just brush through. I'm looking at this, just remember that the probability is what we've been doing in this unit. Um, it's The probability is a percent from 0 to 100 percent, which represents the likelihood of an event to occur. So we've seen probability, this chair is really in my way. We've seen probability written a few different ways. We've seen it written as a fraction, and it honestly on the test might say, write it as a fraction. Um, or, um, so 3 over 5 is just 3 fifths, which if you want to know the probability, you could take 3 divided by 5, which is equal to 0. 0.6, which is equal to 60%. So honestly, probability can be represented in all three ways. It really just depends on the test. They'll specify, though, if they want you to write it a certain way. Now, we've mostly been writing it as percent because it just, I mean, like, probability is the percent likelihood, so that's why I usually have a star after them percent. Okay, so then we're calling 3-1 and 3-2. This was when we first were introduced into probability, and we were dealing with probability of independent events. So remember what independent events means. Independent events means that the probability of the first event or the occurrence of the first event has no effect on the probability or the likelihood of the second event. So they have no effect on each other. Um, so we've had lots of examples of independent probability. That's all we've seen so far. So remember, though, if you do have a probability of independent events, then you can find the probability of two or more events happening by taking the probability of event one times by the probability of event two. Now, I said times, not as, right? So we have to make sure we're timesing. So the probability of event one times the probability of event two is just equal to the probability of event one and two happening. So an example is with replacement, if I have this bucket and I have a blue marble and red marble, if I said, what's the probability of drawing a red, then replacing the red, and then drawing a red again? So first of all, looking at it, let's just find that probability. You don't need to take notes on it or anything. What's the probability right now of drawing a red? 50% or one half, right? One half or 50%. Now, if I draw the red, put it back in, now what's the chance of drawing a red again? Still 50%. Okay, so one half times one half, which is? One, what? You tell me. When you multiply fractions, you can multiply straight across. One, four. So that is 25% chance. There's a 25% chance of drawing a red than a red, as long as you replace it. All right, any questions on that? Okay. Now, we learned in 3-3 about using these intersections and complements. So looking at this Venn diagram, event A has A and B and C. Event B has C, D, E, and F, so where they intersect, they both contain C. And then this G is not in A or B. So A union B. Now, union is the friendly one. Everybody's welcome if they're in A or B. So I'm going to write out that set. What's in A or B? A, B, C, D, E, and F. And so in A or B, everybody's welcome in A or B. Notice we didn't put G in there because it isn't in A or B. All right, so A intersect B. This is the not so friendly one. It's pretty picky. Where do they intersect? What this means, where are they exactly the same? C only, very good. And with the Venn diagram, it makes it easy to see because it's in the intersection of the Venn diagram. All right, B complement. Remember that complement means everything not in B. Everything that's not in B. So look at B. B contains C, D, E, and F. So what's everything not in B? A, A, B, and B. Very good. All right. Now this one's a little bit trickier. It's the complement. Remember, squiggly line means the same thing as the little C. It just means everything not in. So A intersect B. Everything that's not in A intersect B. So I work from the inside out. You always have to pull it out from the inside out. So A intersect B was what? C, right? A intersect B is C. So what's everything that's not in that intersection? A, B, G, good. A, B, G, D, E, F, good. So really, we haven't learned anything super, super difficult. Um, we have seen more difficult problems. But nothing that has knocked your socks off, really. All right, let's get to the new stuff. So the good stuff for today. All right, so today we're going to be dealing with
with dependent events. So this is where we shift gears a little bit and we have to take into consideration where one, um, the event of the first, the event of the first occurrence will affect the second occurrence. So dependent events, you've got to find probability a little bit different. So once again, dependent events will mean the first event occurring has an effect on the likelihood of the second event occurring. So this is the formula. I never even use the formula for this one because I just think about it. So you'll never ever see me write this formula down, but I'll give it to you to begin with just so you can have it. So the probability of both events occurring when dependent is, so the probability of A intersect B, which means A and B. So the probability of events A and B happening is equal to the probability of event A times by the probability of event B given that A has already happened. So that little slash mark means given. Given, so the probability of event B given the prob that A, event A has already happened. So I really do not use this formula. I just say, okay, this is dependent probability. I know how to find the probability of each event occurring, and then I just multiply the probabilities, because that's what we're doing here. We're multiplying the probabilities, but they're not going to be independent. So we just can't find the probabilities of both events individually happening and multiplying them. So we just got to think a little bit harder on this one. But I don't ever use this formula. I just do the math. So, which we are doing this formula when we do the math. It's just not memorizing the formula. So I'll give you another second or two to get that down, and then we'll just go ahead and start practicing this. All right, let's just practice this. Here we go. Okay, so here's our first example from that. Like, you've learned everything that we're going to learn today. We're just going to practice now, okay? So, a teacher has a bag of six red marbles, two green marbles, and five blue marbles. If you draw from the bag without replacement, this would be considered dependent events because if we're not replacing, we draw something out, it's now a whole different... It's now a whole different thing. We're dealing with probabilities of a whole different thing. If we were to put it back in, though, it would be independent events. But these are dependent because we're not replacing once we've drawn. So if you draw with the bag with if you draw from a bag without replacement, you've got to know that that's dependent because it will change the probability of the second event occurring. So let's just start out basic. What's the probability of drawing a red? Well, we know to be able to find probabilities, we need the total number of outcomes. The total. So I'm going to write total. How many total marbles do we have here? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13. Does everybody understand our total 13? We're going to need that. Is everybody okay following me up to here? Okay, so right now, what's the probability of drawing the red? Well, how many red do we have out of 13? 6 out of 13. So the probability of drawing the red is 6 out of 13. So let's actually find the percent likelihood. So you'll do 6. Divided by 13, you get a 46% chance. Questions on that? Okay. That was just one event, so that didn't affect anything. All right, so now what's the probability of drawing a red, comma, green? So red, then a green. Now keep in mind, guys, this is without replacement. So once we've drawn out the red, we've got to start back over, kind of. That's like what we're doing here. So the probability of drawing a red, we know that that was on the first draw. Probability of drawing a red on the first draw was 6 out of 13. All right, now I'm going to find now the probability of drawing a green. So before I do that, I have to take into consideration something. I've drawn a red, so I'm going to exit out one of the reds because I've drawn it out. Now, what's the new total? How many do we have now? 12 marbles. Okay, does everybody understand how now we only have 12 marbles since we didn't put the marble back in? The one we drew out. So our total now for green is 12. Okay, well how many green do we have out of 12? Two. Very good. So our next probability of now drawing the green would be 2 out of 12. Does everybody understand how I did that? Yes, because red was just the first draw. So the first draw, all the marbles were there. There's 6 out of 13. Right, so we're now we're starting at a new probability. Like this is a whole different problem. After so before we took out the red, we found the probability of red. So we're starting from a fresh bag of marbles, right? So 
So before I put the X, yeah, before I put the X, there was six red out of 13. Yeah, that's good. Then once I drew out that red, I set it on the table here, and then I looked at my bucket. Okay, well now I only have 12 marbles, and there's two greens out of 12. So you have to, now you can multiply those individual probabilities. So guys, this is the probability. So this is seriously that formula. I didn't even use the formula. I just used my mind. Now, this is the probability of using that formula, though. Because we found the probability of event A happening, right? Then we found the probability of event B given that A had already occurred. Does that make sense on how the formula works, everybody? It was just easier for me to just do it, though. So now you take that, multiply it. So we'll have, you can just put it in parentheses, do 6 divided by 13, close your parentheses, times by 2 divided by 12. I'm typing it in. So I get 0 0.076. So that's a 7.6% chance that we'll draw a red, then a green. Does that make sense, everybody? Are we all okay? You're all good. Okay. Let's find the probability of drawing. So now we're starting back over. I'm going to erase this. Now we're starting back over. Oops. I should have been more careful there. All right. So now let's find the probability of drawing a red, then a red. So first of all, starting from here, how many red do we have out of 13? Six out of 13. So now we've drawn our red. So I'm going to exit out our red again. Is everybody following me? Now, what's the probability of drawing a red? 5 out of 12. Very good. So times by 5 out of 12. All right. So then you'll do that in your calculator. 6 divided by 13 times 5 divided by 12. And you get 0.19. And that's 19%. Questions? Okay. Um, you could. It just honestly, I mean, I'm just rounding to the tens today, probably, but I would accept that answer as well. Yeah, good question. All right. Now this is a little bit trickier. So we just gotta think a little bit on this one. So it says, so starting back over, I'm gonna erase this. Okay. So now it says, what's the probability of drawing a green given a red has already been drawn? So this time we're not asking the probability of drawing a green and a red, or a red then a green. It just simply wants to know what's the probability of drawing a green given a red has already been drawn. So if a red's already been drawn, can I just exit out a red? Yeah. So now what's the probability of drawing a green given a red has already occurred? Two out of 12 marbles. Very good. So two out of 12. Two divided by 12. 16. Oh, 17, if I'm in a rock center, 10, 17%. Questions on that? Okay, so we're all good with dependent probability on this first example. Okay, good. All right, moving on. All right, now I'm going to just do some more advanced problems. You're doing great, so stay with me here. So what's the probability of drawing a blue, then a blue, then a red? Now remember, we're not replacing these marbles. So we've got to think a little bit about these. If they were replacing it, it's easy, okay? So now it's dependent because we're not replacing. So what's the probability of drawing a blue, then a blue, then a red? So let's go through it piece by piece. What's the probability of drawing a blue on the first one? 5 out of 13. So there's 5 blue out of 13. Now I'm going to exit it out. We drew a blue. Now what's the probability on my second draw of drawing a blue? How many blues are there? 4 out of how many marbles now? 12. Very good. So now I draw another blue. All right, now what's the probability of drawing a red? How many red do we have? One, two, three, four, five, six out of how many though? How many marbles? Eleven. Very good. So now we can find the probability of drawing a blue, blue, red by multiplying those. So guys, help me out. Drag this, typing it in. Okay. What do you get? You shall be practicing typing it in, not just making me do it. Thank you, Justin. 0 0.069, so that's 6.9%, right? 6.9%. Any questions? Okay. All right, let's keep going. Okay, new problem. What's the probability of drawing a blue? That one's easy. 5 out of 13. All right, so 5 out of 13, which is 38%. Okay, now let's do this 
one. Because we've got to be careful. We've got to get used to how these are worded and what they're asking. What? So pay close attention. Notice this problem looks different than these. See how these are separated by commas? That just means blue, then blue, then red. Now remember what that slash means. It means given. So in this problem, it says, what's the probability of blue given that blue has already occurred? So once again, what's the probability of drawing a blue given that blue has already occurred? So this one's already occurred. So I'm going to go over here, cross it out because it's already occurred. So now, what's the probability of finding a, a, drawing a blue? 4 out of 12. Very good. There's 4 blue out of 12 now because the blue was already drawn. So 4 out of 12 is 33% chance. Questions on that? Okay, last couple. All right, I'm going to erase this. Now with this one, these are slashes. You guys, there's a huge difference. That's why I'm doing so many examples. On the test, on an end of level, there's a difference between this problem. The probability of a blue, then a blue, then a red, versus the probability of a red, given that blue, given that blue has already happened. So this one's probably the trickiest one yet. So what's the probability of drawing a red, given that blue and blue was already drawn? So good, we drew a blue and a blue, right? So those two blues were gone. We don't care about their probabilities. We just want to know the probability of red, given that those two blues were already drawn. So now, how many reds? Six out of how many total? Eleven. So six out of eleven. So there's a way good chance that we're going to now draw, well, pretty good, 54%. So 50, oh, well, 55% if we round up. So there's a 55% chance that we'll draw a red. Given that a blue and a blue were already drawn. Questions? Don't say I didn't understand any of it then if you're not going to ask questions. So you are getting it. You really are understanding it completely. Everybody? Okay. All right. So let's do these two last ones. What's the probability of green, comma, green? Is this one given that green has already happened? No. We want to know the probability of drawing a green, then a green. So first of all, what's the probability of drawing a green on the first draw? Two out of 13. Now we've drawn a green. So what's the probability of drawing a green now? One out of 12. So two out of 13 times by one out of 12. Now I'm going to have us write this answer different. You guys all got a decimal. Now change it back to a fraction. Math, enter, enter. One out of what? Do it on your calculator so I know that you know how to do it. So you got a decimal, but I want it. I want it as a fraction as an answer this time. The most simplified fraction. One out of what? One out of seventy-eight. Very good. One out of seventy-eight. So there's a one out of seventy-eight chance that we'll draw a green then a green. That's the same thing as the decimal. It's just written as a different form. All right, moving on. What's the probability of drawing a green? of drawing a green given a green has already been drawn. So I'm going to leave it exited, up, exited off. So what's the probability of drawing a green given that a green has already been drawn? 1 out of 12. So everybody understand why it's 1 out of 12. I crossed out a green. Okay, 1 out of 12. So 1 out of 12. So I'm going to have us leave it like that as our answer because if you do that, you'll get 0 0.08. If I have to change it back to a fraction, that's 1 over 12. Okay. Questions on that? All right. All right, last one, and this is just one example here. So given 10 Hershey's, five Reese's, what's the probability of picking first two Reese's, then two Hershey's? So this question throws students for a loop every time. That's why I put it up here. This is, we're almost done with examples, and I'm going to let you practice, but we need to go through this one. So it says, given 10 Hershey's and five Reese's, what's the probability of picking first two Reese's, then two Hershey's. Now people, students, when they see this, they want to work in twos. They want to say, okay, I'm drawing two at a time. Well, I mean, you can think of it, but you're making it harder on yourself. Because we're not replacing the Hershey's or Reese's, we've got, we can think of these individually, okay? So we've got to think of these individually. So the reason it throws people off is because it says picking first two Reese's. So they think you're picking two at a time, which even if you are, you've got to think of it as individual picks, yes. Yes. 
Yep, so right here we have, yes, yeah, so we have um, 10 Hershey's and 5 Reese's. So first of all, I need to know the total number of candy bars. How many total? 15. Does everybody understand how I always find the total? Okay, so now it says the probability of picking first two Reese's. So let's work in one at a time. From the very beginning, what's the probability of picking the Reese's? One out of how many? Oh, no, not one, sorry. I didn't mean to say that. How many we're picking on our first pick? Sorry. How many Hershey's are there? Oh, it says picking first two Reese's. Sorry, I'm not listening to myself. How many Reese's are there? Five. So if this is our first pick, there's five Reese's out of 15. Does everybody understand that's on our first pick? Okay, let's move on to our second pick. So let's say that we drew a Reese's. Now that Reese's has been drawn. How many Reese's on the second pick? Four out of 14. Now there's only four Reese's out of 14 candy bars. Okay, let's move on to our third pick. So it says then two Hershey's. Now, even though it says two Hershey's, you're going to work in ones at a time. So what's the probability of drawing a Hershey's now? Sorry, I crossed out another Reese's. How many Hershey's? How many Hershey's total? 10 out of how many her candy bars? 13. Questions on that? So now I pick the Hershey's. How many Hershey's are left to pick if I want to pick a Hershey's on the last one? Nine Hershey's are left out of 12 candy bars. Very good. So then I multiply that. So you'll do 5 15 times 4 divided by 14 times by 10 divided by 13 times by 9 divided by 12. So the probability of drawing first two Reese's, then two Hershey's, is 0 0.059, which is 5.9 percent chance. 0 0.0549, yeah. 0 0.0549, true. So 5.49, so that'd be 5.5, five, right? Sorry about that. 5.4. Nine, so that'd be five point five percent. All right. So, what's the probability of drawing a Hershey's? So, I'm gonna erase this real quick. We have now we're back to the beginning of time. So, what's the probability of drawing a Hershey's given that a Reese's, given that a Hershey's has been drawn? So, we've drawn a Reese's and a Hershey's, right? So, I'm gonna cross out a uh, Reese's and Hershey's. So now, what's the probability? Of drawing a Hershey's. How many Hershey's? Nine out of how many candy bars? Thirteen. Good. So nine out of thirteen. So that's sixty-nine percent. Questions. Okay, so really dependent probability is not any harder necessarily. You just have to know it's dependent. All right, you guys feel pretty comfortable. Okay, do problems one, two, three, four, and six. Have me check your answers before you. Move on, please. I need to see you looking at me so I know you're actually paying attention. Okay, so I'm going to read this problem and then we're going to decide, are these dependent or independent events? Because we've got to decide. It's not going to say to you, these are dependent events. So you know how to use the probability. You have to decide on your own. So it says, in the movie, 30% are male. So in the movie theater, 30% inside are male. The drinks that are available are Diet Coke and Sprite. 80% of females choose Diet Coke. Of the males, 35% choose Sprite. So, if you think about this problem, we have males and females, right? And then they're choosing two types of drinks, Diet Coke or Sprite. Does, are these dependent probabilities? Is the likelihood of being a male or female going to affect whether they choose Sprite or Coke? No, right? It's not going to change anything. So, these are independent events. So all we have to do is multiply the probabilities of independent events. So I just made a tree diagram like this. So I just made a tree diagram. I said, all right, in the movie theater, there's males and there's females. Is everybody following me? Now, in the movie, 30% are males. So I'm going to write, so 30% are males. Well, then how many are females? 70% are females. Does everybody understand how I got all of that just from there? Okay. Now, there are two choices. If they're a male, they can choose either a Sprite or a Diet Coke. Well, if they're a female, they can still choose a Sprite or a Diet Coke. Does everybody see how I set up my tree diagram? Now it says, the drinks that are available are Diet Coke and Sprite. 80% of females choose Diet Coke. 
adults. I'm going to females. 80% choose Diet Coke. So what percent of females choose Sprite? 20%. Does everybody understand how I got all of that just from there? And I continue. Of the males, 35% choose Sprite. So 35% choose Sprite. So how many choose Diet Coke of milk? 65%. Now, because these are independent events, we just multiply individual probabilities. So it says, what's the probability there's a female drinking Sprite? So first of all, what's the probability of being a female? 70%. And I have to type it in my calculator as 0 0.70. Now, what's the probability that the female drinking Sprite? 20%. So 0 0.20. I multiply my individual probabilities. And that will be my answer of being a female and drinking Sprite. So I type it in, 0 0.70, that's 70%, times 0 0.20, that's 20%, and that's 14%. So there's a 14% chance that in the movie theater, there's a female drinking Sprite. Questions? Um, no, actually you wouldn't. So you would come out right at the same place. Good question. You could just type in 0.7 and 0.2. Any questions? You're sure there's none? All right, so now you can go ahead and finish the worksheet. So just pay attention to if they're independent or dependent events. Thank you.